if you sit in the Buddhist way, uh, it makes your legs ache. And uh, you, most uh, Westerners, start to fidget. They find it very boring to sit for a long time. But the reason they find it boring is that they're still thinking. If you weren't thinking, you wouldn't notice the passage of time. And as a matter of fact, far from being boring, the world, when looked at without chatter, becomes amazingly interesting. The most ordinary sights and sounds and smells, the texture of shadows on the floor in front of you, all these things without being named and saying, that's a shadow, that's red, that's brown, that's somebody's foot. When you don't name things any longer, you start seeing them. Because, say, when a person says, I see a leaf, immediately one thinks of a spearhead-shaped thing outlined in black and filled in with flat green. No leaf looks like that. No leaves. Leaves are not green. That's why Lao Tzu said, the five colors make a man blind, the five tones make a man deaf. Because if you can only see five colors, you're blind. And if you can only hear five tones in music, you're deaf. You see, if you, if you force sound into five tones, you force color into five colors, you're blind and deaf. The, the world of color is infinite, as is the world of sound. And it is only through stopping, fixing conceptions on the world of color and sound that you really begin to hear it and see it. So this, uh, shall I be so bold as to use the word discipline of meditation or zazen, lies behind the extraordinary capacity of Zen people to develop such great arts as uh, the gardens, the tea ceremony, the calligraphy, and the grand painting of the Sung dynasty and of the Japanese uh, Sumi tradition. And it was because, uh, especially in tea ceremony, which means literally channel you in Japanese means hot water of tea, they found in the very simplest things of everyday life magic. In the words of the poet Hokoji, marvelous power and supernatural activity, drawing water, carrying wood. <laughs>